Hey everybody, my name is Eric Knight. I'm your host here of the Natatorium Knowledge Channel. I'm with Arenda Technologies. We are a pool chemistry company, but we also work with indoor air quality for indoor swimming pools. And today we've got a subject matter expert, the president of Desert Air Dehumidifiers, Keith Corson. Keith, thank you for being with us. Good morning, Eric. We are going to keep this one quick. The whole purpose of this channel is to have a subject matter expert explain, well, the complicated stuff. And we're gonna to try to distill that down so that it could be understood by anybody. So uh, we hear this term vapor pressure. Keith, what is vapor pressure in a natatorium? Well, vapor pressure in its simplest forms uh, compares the difference of, of uh, environments generally inside the pool room to outside the pool room. So any building, it doesn't need to be a natatorium, has a vapor pressure difference. And so you're in Charlotte right now, it's hot and humid. So outside, the air has a vapor pressure. Inside, you've got this wonderful climate controlled environment that has a lower vapor pressure. And this has to do with the psychometrics, but I'm gonna leave it at that. Because so, heat and humidity expand as we discussed. Yeah, it, 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 it's, right? it's all re re related into- So is, uh, is that heat trying to push into my house? The, the, yeah, the, the heat and the vapor, they, they, they are tied together. Uh, on a given day at one temperature, if you have a higher relative humidity, you have a higher vapor pressure. So, so it's not only temperature- humidity goes up, vapor pressure goes up. Absolutely. And the conversely, you know, at a constant temperature, you drive the uh, uh, relative humidity down, you get a lower. And and so, you know, the, the problem with the outdoors is it changes all, all, all the time, but, it's always trying to do, Mother Nature never likes anything that doesn't come to an equilibrium. So it senses your indoor room is low in vapor pressure, it is high outside, so it wants to drive th uh, through. So what does the builder do? The builder puts, puts something Tyvek like on the wall. Tyvek, and Tyvek yeah. is a vapor retardant. And so that air comes on in and it can't get through. So your environment, the air conditioner just gets to take care of the temperature and doesn't have to worry about what's going to go on. Now let's so this go back vapor, babe, this one question, this vapor paper, I mean, I have an older house, but it's brick on four walls. Are you saying that moisture can go through brick? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Through brick and porous brick is por considered porous. It's actually easy really? for vapor to get through. Yeah. I, we'll get into the natatorium, but, it, but you can tell when an old natatorium never put up a vapor barrier because on the brick on the outside there, we call it effervescence. There's all the white powdery oh, stuff. I, on oh, the believe outside. me, we, pool chemistry, we know about efflorescence. That's when <laughs> moisture goes through stone, but I didn't realize that there was enough pressure I mean, I know that moisture can go through if you have like a raised spa and you have this water pressure pushing through. I didn't realize that the air outside of my house has enough pressure to push through brick. That's ridiculous to me. But yeah, no, it, it, it is. And, and, and so hopefully your builder put on the inside a vapor pressure, a vapor barrier. So brick, vapor barrier, wall. Hope so. <laughs> Hope so. Otherwise you've so got- on a pool, but you're saying, it, so you're seeing this efflorescence on the outside it's the reverse. Okay. Where is the high? Where is the higher? I mean, yeah, on a day like today in Charlotte, the inside of the pool room and your outside environment are probably equal. So there's or, no or difference. Similar. Yeah. similar. And there's yeah. no driving force. But as soon as you go into fall, winter, spring, the outside is lower vapor pressure than inside a pool where we maintain continuously at 85 degrees at 50 to 60 percent our age it is the higher and it is pushing to the outside it is pushing into locker rooms it is pushing into adjacent uh, uh, classrooms tennis courts this is why you see the rooms around a pool that if no vapor retardant is put in you have yeah. ongoing problems that are seen in the other rooms, not necessarily in yeah, the like, like the fixtures and the anything metal in the locker rooms get rusted out and it's always wet. Like a, a, I've been in so many natatoriums where the where the locker rooms, they're just wet. Yeah. It's not from swimmers. It's just, they're dripping from the because rising ceiling. So you're saying there wasn't a vapor barrier. 
Right. And, and an open door. Think about it. An open door. Where's the vapor barrier? Not much you can do about that. If you so, pop the door, of course, it'll keep pushing through. Yeah. So I always say vapor is like salmon swimming upstream when they go to spawn. You can like have that. actual air velocity go in one direction and the vapor pressure is strong enough to go against the air velocity. This is a, a, a phenomenon that we need to be aware of as we get into these dehumidification type applications. Hold on, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. So we know that we have to keep the natatorium slightly negative, not so much that the, the doors are vacuumed shut, but like what, 10% negative, is that about right? That's a very common number. Okay, so if we're 10% negative, we're keeping the pool air in the pool, but we're also progressively getting less negative as we go, but like the locker room should be pulled into the pool and then the hallway should be pulled into the locker room and the pump room should be pulled. You know, they have their own ventilation for chemical and stuff, but right. everything just works its way towards the pool. Are you saying that vapor pressure can actually resist that and still go into the locker rooms in the hallway? Yes. Good to know. So if you're watching this, actually, I didn't know that. Uh, I sometimes ask questions that I somewhat know the answer to. That shocks me. So this is something that I learned in this. Uh, how do we resist that? So your, your, your comment, well, your comment about the locker rooms, that's why it got there. Even though it might have a negative relative to one another the correct way, it gets there. So how do we prevent it? You have to put a vapor retardant on the inside walls of a pool room not on the outside walls, on the inside walls. So what does that look like? In, if it's a brick structure, there's paint materials that form a great vapor barrier. Um, and and it, there's other materials that you can put if it's a, a different type of wall, like a, a, an appropriate wood product that has the resistance, you put it behind it. One of the things that people forget are about lights. If it's not a sealed light and you have an opening, mm. it drives through the light can into the wall structure. People forget to seal buildings at the top where the roof line comes in. You, we've got pictures of stalagmites forming of ice on the outside because somebody didn't put a vapor barrier up up top because it drove it right through. Um, the, the other thing, if I walk in and I see a drop ceiling, like you would have oh, in an God, office. Oh, I hate those for pools. Well, they're ridiculous. There is no vapor barrier. And now you've got air being conditioned on one side and nothing happening above. It's disaster waiting to happen. I, I went to a pool that had a drop ceiling. It was a little swim school. I'm not going to say their name, but they had their uh, gas furnace hanging from cables above the drop ceiling, right above the water. It could The cables were rusting like crazy. At some point, the cables are going to give out and that heavy unit could kill somebody. But yet somehow that got passed. I don't yeah. know. Um, but it, it needs to be removed. And th and in one the other thing is, I know we're, we're a little short on time, but drop ceilings always get soggy. Is that from vapor pressure or just like general humidity? Yeah, it, it, it's, literally the dr it's driving it into the material and the material has the ability to absorb until it gets so heavy that it, oh, man. it busts itself out. And, and, you know, the other thing in a drop ceiling, vapor gets by it, it goes up to the roof line and condenses and, and actually water condenses from the roof on the upside of the uh, panels, which then gets absorbed in and you have disaster happening multiple ways. So you need to form this interior vapor pressure. You need to be concerned about lights. I mean, vapor barrier, you need to be concerned about the lights, everything else that you're going, door seals. Mm -hmm. Under You gotta have door seals. Because okay, if so you have- what from a dehumidification standpoint, other than a vapor barrier, can you do with a dehumidifier, if anything, to reduce the vapor pressure? Or do we not want to reduce it? Maybe we want it. That it, it, it has it has nothing to do with the, the dehumidifier in the short answer. You always have a, a high temperature, high humidity environment by design. So it is forming this outward pressure, even under controlled dehumidified room. So the dehumidifier is out of it. Where the dehumidifier helps is to create these negative air pressure. So we pull from the rooms, try to help reduce the pushing of it. That we help with. But this phenomenon of actual moisture migration is independent of the air handling system. It has to do with the, the idea that we have high humidity environments with low humidity environments on other side of walls. Right. 
Well, we could keep talking about the physics of this forever, but this explains vapor pressure pretty well for me. So hopefully it explained it well for you, uh, whether you're an engineer or not. Uh, we're just grateful. Keith Corson, again, president of Desert Air Corporation. If you have dehumidification questions, he is today's subject matter expert. I'm Eric Knight with Arenda. Keith, thank you so much for joining me today on Natatorium Knowledge. Hope to have you back sometime soon. Thank <laughs> you.